Hi friends, it's Dana here. Today I have a story for you about the Queen of East Tennessee and the Smoky Mountains. It is none other than Dolly Parton. And my family loves going to Dolly's theme park, Dollywood. And they're always asking me questions about how did Dolly get so famous? And how, what makes her so special? And I think this book does a really good job summarizing exactly the answers to all those questions. It is called I Am Dolly Parton. It is an Ordinary People Change the World book by Brad Meltzer and Christopher Eliopoulos. Let's read and find out all about Miss Dolly. Here we go. I Am Dolly Parton. Once upon a time, on the coldest day of the year, in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains of East Tennessee, a little girl was born in a one-room cabin. That girl was me. If that sounds like a fairy tale, you'll see. My life sure does feel like one. This girl is squalling. Wah! Something tells me she's just getting started. We were so poor, my daddy paid Dr. Thomas with a sack of cornmeal. I like to joke I've been raking in the dough ever since. I was the fourth of 12 kids, a little firecracker unafraid to wrestle with my brothers. Eventually, we moved to a two-room shack for all of us. I got you. No, I got you. No, I got you. When there's 12 kids, there's lots of games to play. Growing up, my mama read me stories from the Bible, which planted the seeds for my love of reading. One of my favorite books was this one, The Little Engine That Could. I think I can. I think I can. Books showed me there was a world beyond the Smoky Mountains. As kids, to keep the wind out, we'd use newspapers as wallpaper. It may sound strange, but it was fun to stand on our heads and read the comics. Ha! That's hysterical! I'll tell you one thing about being poor. It makes you creative. To save money, my daddy would carve wood toys while my mama would make us dolls out of corn cobs. The first song I wrote at five years old was about this doll. Tiny little tassel top, I love you an awful lot. The only time we all got store-bought toys was Christmas. One toy for each of us. The brothers would get fireworks. I'd get a doll. It didn't even have clothes, but I thought it was so fancy. One Christmas, Daddy told us he wasn't buying us any presents. He needed the money to finally get my mama a real wedding ring. That year, our Christmas present was a single box of chocolate-covered cherries that we all shared. Don't feel bad. Seeing my mama happy made it the most special Christmas of all. You see, to understand who I am, you need to understand where I'm from and also who I come from. My daddy taught me the value of hard work, but it was my mama's side that gave me the gift of music. They were always picking banjos and mountain instruments. There you go, Dolly, find that beat. Ding, ding, ding. Today, it's easy to find music on the TV or radio, but back then, we didn't have electricity. Luckily, we did lots of singing in church. There you go, Dolly, just like that. Some said my voice was weird, but I kept singing. Even before I could write, I was making up songs. To stand out, since Daddy didn't let us wear makeup, I'd put flour on my face and rouge my cheeks with pokeberries. Ta-da! How's it look? They certainly won't forget you. <laughs> my first performances were on our porch with a tin can for a microphone. I'd sing to the kids I was babysitting. I'd sing to whatever animals I could find. Heck, I'd sing to dirt if no one was around. When I was 10 years old, my Uncle Bill got me my first radio performance. Okay, girl, show us what you got. I looked for help, but I knew it was up to me. I sang if, as if I'd never had another chance. The crowd exploded, and unlike the kids I babysat, none of them crawled away. But if my family taught me anything, 
it's that success doesn't come easy. God gives us all our own gifts, but you need hard work to make the most of them. One fall, my mama made me a patchwork coat out of scraps of fabric. Ever heard the Bible story of Joseph and his coat of many colors? It was given to him so he'd feel loved and special. Almost done? Not much longer. When it was finished, I was so excited to show off my coat at school. I thought it was the grandest thing in the world. But then the, when the other kids saw it, yuck, that's just a bunch of rags. So ugly. It's hard when you don't feel like you belong. So often as a kid, I felt different, lonely, like I wasn't the same as anyone else. Where I came from, people never dreamed of seeing the world, but I wanted to know what was on the other side of the mountain. It's why I love butterflies so much. I used to imagine that they had a magic powder that let me fly and see the world. I know that makes me sound like a dreamer, but that's a good thing. You never know where your dreams can take you. At 12 years old, mine took me to an abandoned nearby church that I went to for some quiet time. Anybody here? Inside, I couldn't believe what I saw. It wasn't just the old piano. It was something else, something I could feel. Like God was shining a light and wanted me to be me like it was all right for me to dream, all right for me to see the world, and of course, all right for me to sing my songs. At 13, I got on a big interstate bus with my grandma. My uncle said if I could get to Lake Charles, Louisiana, I'd get my very own recording session. I'd never traveled like this, and boy, I loved the adventure. That same year, I got to sing at the Grand Old Opry, where the most famous country music singers perform. A, music, a musician named Johnny Cash introduced me. We've got a little girl here from up in East Tennessee. Loop. I froze until a flash bulb went off. Then I smiled at the people in the balcony and let her rip. I got called back for three encores. At my high school graduation, each student was asked to announce their plans for the future. I told everyone, I'm going to Nashville to become a star. The crowd laughed. It made me even more determined. The very next morning, I was on a bus to Nashville. I had my dreams, an old guitar and matching luggage, three paper bags from the grocery store. <laughs> Most important, I had my songs. I'd write songs everywhere, on napkins, torn paper, even on Kleenex boxes. Sometimes I'd write while I was on the bus. And sure, I wrote about love and heartbreak, like other country singers. But I also wrote about things that were more personal. I'll call this one Coat of Many Colors. My music career felt like it was finally starting. After winning an award for Country Song of the Year, I got an offer to be the co-host of a popular TV show. This new Dolly woman is good. Even there, I kept writing songs, especially about subjects that were overlooked by others, problems that everyday people went through. Miss Dolly, I love your autograph. Of course, sweetie, what's your name? Jolene. What a strong name. I'm gonna use it in a song. But let me tell you, the more successful I became, the more people tried to treat me like a sidekick. I am nobody's sidekick. I think it's time for me to leave the show and go out on my own. You're gonna regret this. I didn't regret it. My co-host made me pay him around $1 million, saying he was the reason for my success. I knew he was wrong and that it would take me years to get that money back. We eventually made up. Forgiveness is vital, but I wanted a fresh start, and I knew with hard work, I'd make it on my own. That's exactly what happened. Instead of wearing what other people wanted me to wear, I put on flashy, colorful costumes that fit my personality. I've never seen anyone like her. 
isn't she amazing? Instead of just singing country songs, I started singing to all audiences. You just sold a million copies. Instead of just being a music star, I was also in the movies nine to five. Listen to this part. Tumble out of bed and stumble to the kitchen. Pour myself a cup of ambition. <laughs> I even started my own charity, Dolly Parton's Imagination Library, which promotes reading by giving away free books to kids like you. The first book we started with, The Little Engine That Could. Reading and education is how you help kids find their happily ever after. Eventually, I opened my own amusement park. I wanted a place where people could dream and fantasize all they want. We didn't put it in California or Orlando. We put it right here in the Great Smoky Mountains of Tennessee, 10 miles from where I grew up. The business people said it'd never work. I didn't listen to them. They have a replica of Dolly's original house here. In every song I sing, know what I'm really doing, telling a story. Stories of everyday people, poor people, people who feel invisible or unseen. I write about women and men going through the hard parts of life. And the more I sing about triumphs and sorrow, the more people realize they aren't alone. That's just like me, and me, and me, and me, and me, and me. At my concerts, you can find the old and young, rich and poor, gay and straight, city folks and country folks, black and white, and everyone else you can imagine. I love them all. I don't judge who people are as long as they're themselves. In my life, I came from a humble beginnings, and that was just fine by me. I was never ashamed of it. It made me who I am and it gave me the foundations of my life, my faith, my family, and my music. It's okay to be different. It's okay to feel unseen. Sometimes the world won't be cheering for you, but I will be. Whatever mountain gets in your path, keep climbing. It's the only way to see what's on the other side. Did you know that Dolly has written around 3,000 songs, including I Will Always Love You, which hit number one for 14 weeks? She's won 10 Grammys and sold 100 million albums worldwide. Her Imagination Library has gifted over 185 million books to kids around the world, and that number grows by 2 million every month. Every year, more than 3 million visitors go to Dollywood, which accounts for nearly 20,000 jobs in the local community. She, been, she even helped fund COVID-19 research, which helped create a vaccine. There's only one thing you gotta be in life, yourself. Whatever you are, be authentically that. And the people who look, sound, or think different from you Love them for who they are, too. Your dreams are worth dreaming. Your songs are worth singing. Your story is worth telling, just as it is. Be proud of who you are, and don't ever limit yourself. I am Dolly Parton, and I see the light that shines within you. The end. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you got to put up with the rain. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, Dolly. I am so happy you shared your story with us. It is a beautiful story. And I love that you're encouraging us all to embrace and be ourselves. It is a beautiful, beautiful message. Thank you so much for reading with me, friends. If you don't mind, please give me a like and a subscribe for this story. And I'll keep on telling stories over and over again with you. Thanks so much, friends. Bye.